Hey everyone, welcome back to Hit or Quit and our coverage of Amazon Freebies The Goat. We are back to recap the pen ultimate, not the pen ultimation, uh, as as Tosh would coin, um, but the penultimate episode of The Goat, episode nine. I'm, of course, Jenny, joined by the goat himself, uh, my goat forever. I would lure him. Well, lure is not a good word, actually. I should not say lure. But I would yeah. pair him up with anyone I felt is suited for him and and bring him to his designated pen any day. Uh, <laughs> the great Chappelle is with me. How are you doing? <laughs> Uh, not great, Jenny. Not great. Yeah. Um, I really thought day. we had this one. I really <laughs> thought we had this one. I, I've been convincing myself for oh. weeks. I said, man, the way we finally going to get us one. Davon is finally going to have her moment in the sun. She's going to get the crown that's rightfully hers. She is the GOAT. She deserves this. And I mean, right here at the finish line, just snatched from under her. Pour one out for Davon. I've been Pour better, one Jenny. Out for Day. Yeah. yeah. It was, I mean, we talked at great lengths last week about, you know, you know, it being Davon's game to lose, but also, you know, what her prospects might be if it's some sort of jury situation and that it wasn't necessarily a slam dunk, even if she gets there. Mm. Um, I will say, as a Davon supporter, as someone who has really enjoyed her journey on this show, loved seeing her succeed, loved seeing her have, you know, good, reliable allies, uh, even if maybe some of them just took the swipe at the maybe end. Maybe not. Yeah, um, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, she had some. She had some. Um, you know, it, it it's been it's been great watching this for her. I I will say, I think this is the better place to lose, to be the fallen angel, to be the last one before the finale. Um, because she gets to say, you know, I just needed to win those one more comp. I just needed to win this comp or that comp or whatever. And we don't know how the, the, the final, like how we get down to a winner from the four that we're left with at the end here. So I don't know what else she might have needed to do if she got through this episode, but Going here, she can at least be like, hey, I needed to win a challenge and I didn't win a challenge. I think this stings massively for Davon if she does all this work, gets to the end, and doesn't win because of people feeling some type of way about how she played the game. So if we want to look on the bright side here, if we want to say there was never a world where she could win for whatever reason... You got to feel okay about how it ended here, right? Like, am I, do you feel that way or do you think it, it would still, like, what do you think? Oh, I completely disagree. I, I no. for me, I need to know that I would have lost, right? I need to know. I need to have I that kind of closure. Can't know. Yeah. yeah, like, because now you're like, I would, all I needed to do was this one thing and I choked or I fumbled or I dropped the ball, you know, whatever the case may be, you were at the finish line, your game was in your yeah. own hands. You had to will yourself into the final and you could not do it. So you lose and you're always going to wonder, but man, if I had gotten to the finals, what could have happened? You know what I'm saying? You like, don't have it, that way of knowing. Cause even when have like, no way. Probes, like in Survivor is like, who would have voted for so-and-so like people it's a hypothetical situation. People aren't always truthful. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It would just drive me crazy. Cause I would always want to know, like, I would always want to know. Cause we, if, if we get to the finale and the, the final thing is a competition and it's, you know, reality TV trivia or something like that. Yeah. Davon's kicking herself. Cause she's like, what the hell? I like, that's yeah. my challenge. I, I could have destroyed you. What are you saying? You know, mm -hmm. um, we, we, you and I, we talked about uh, Deal or No Deal Island with Rob, and yeah. we were questioning Dundee? the whole time. Yeah, Dundee, <laughs> Dundee for life. Listen, we were Dundee questioning how long uh, or how the final, you know, situation was going to go down with the winner of the, of the competition. Like, we were like, is there a jury vote? Is there a competition? It ends yeah. up being a race, basically a maze that led to like a, like a ropes course, even, you know, essentially. And you know, if you make it to the, if you see that, you know, in the finale and say, oh, I probably would have never I, done well in that. You can say, okay, cool. But if you yeah. see it and it's in your wheelhouse, like Boston Rob is kicking himself, you know, because he's like, I yeah. would have cooked that. I would have just destroyed that. It would have been a nope, like in and out, 17 seconds done, you know? And yeah. so I feel like just 
me always wondering what if, what would have happened, that that would just drive me insane. So, uh, you know, I like living in a world where we say, you know, it was really Davon who was in control the most, but we don't, but she didn't win. And that's okay. Like the one who should have won. Uh, yeah. And I think she says even that that's a narrative that she would be pushing. Like, you're the one who could have beat me. Uh, you know, you had to take Basically me out final to win. Words. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the big boss. I'm the bad guy. You had to take me out or you couldn't win the game. It's something mm-hmm. to hang your hat on for sure. But for me, I would always want to know. So I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the moral victory or feeling like, hey, I did I did the I had the most complete game, which is why I felt just short because no one felt like they could beat me. Um, That's one thing. But like, you know, a a check for 200K is a different story. And we know we know what Davon's motivation is. So Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I hear you on that. I think it's just throughout the season and also just seeing some of like the the ways that some people talked about her, I was mm-hmm. a little nervous. I was a little yeah. nervous about, be, you know, because these some of these people, a lot of these people have not done a competition reality yeah. and show. And it's a totally different situation. And they're not necessarily, I mean, even in regular like competition reality shows, like the, the person that everyone says, like, deserve to win doesn't always win and the the, the you know the long standing argument of, of what deserves to win means but i really think that when you get into a situation with a bunch of reality stars with you know their own egos they've they've built up a persona and you know they've lost or they felt like they trusted someone they've never played a game like this where they've been deceived by someone let's say and you know, it's, this is a quicker game, and I don't know that, uh, you know, everyone would be, like, objectively looking at it and being like, well, you know, Davon kind of ran the table. She, uh, you know, she was winning everything. Like, there, I do really feel like there was a chance that um, she could have gotten there, and it, it couldn't have, it might not have gone her way, and that was what I was most afraid for, because I was like, don't do this to her. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. please don't do this to her. So yeah. that's this is my way of softening the blow in that like, hey, at least if she was gonna lose, this is how she lost, being like, you know, taken out because everyone felt like they they couldn't beat her. But mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. It, without having the concrete evidence that you couldn't, if you're like, she lost that that challenge by what was it seven seconds to jason yeah. um and she's emotional saying like hey if i was if i was in last i this wouldn't hurt so bad but like to be like mm-hmm. i was so close to saving myself here um yeah. that that shit keeps you up at night yeah and you know this is probably going to be very boring to the listeners so if you listen to this and you don't want to hear me like oh. just break down like randomly you just rant about reality tv go ahead and fast forward um, a little bit that's what people are here for i think that uh, people look, are gonna say this i think they're I don't think they're here for the fun sometimes, but sometimes I really do have to look at like at the actual game mechanics of it all and like yeah. how you win a game like this. And Jenny, I have to ask because as we all know, I'm a big Dave Vaughn fan. Yeah. But the title of the GOAT is very arbitrary, right? Like these people are the GOAT. They're, they're the way they got picked, whatever. I still yeah. say Dave Vaughn is in in um in the conversation for the greatest reality TV contestant of all time, just because of just her presence, right? Though like the amount of attention she bring, brings to like big brother right she yeah. becomes a face of big brother after playing twice and not getting close to winning the game at all you know like not even getting close and she was the face of the seasons that she was on so it made sense right but in order to be the greatest competitor i think that's a different conversation you know contestant is one thing but i do think the competition part is really what's going to set people apart in these conversations for me and i wonder if a better competitor at this like if that's what really separates the greats like are the greats the ones who don't make it across the finish line because they get cut or are the greats the ones who should definitely get cut and they somehow ink their way to the next spot i'm thinking like Tom Westman, Kim Spradlin, you know, like Boston Rock, you know, the ones who like back against the wall, Tony, you know, back against the wall, odds are against them. Everybody knows they're going to win if they make it to the end. We have to stop this person, but you just can't stop them for whatever reason. Uh, Derek Lavasser, as much as I hate to talk about him, he's another one where it's like, 
you definitely should not get to the end. Cody Calafiore is another one, you know, like where everyone sees they're the front runner. Yeah. And yet they still make it. I think for me, when it comes to the greatest realities competition, like or competitors of all time, I think it's something to say about the person who is in the front and is still able to get past that that speed bump where everybody knows you're the biggest threat and they still allow you to get to the end. And I'm like, I'm sad to say that Davon does not be like get added to that list because I do mm-hmm. think, like you were saying, with this particular cast, this should be one of the casts where you might be able to pull that off. There's not a lot of competition reality show people around, so maybe you can trick them into not cutting you at the last minute. You know, I think maybe CJ's famous final words of, Y'all are about to let Davon win. Y'all all look weak. What you gonna do about it, Paula? You know, I really think that that is what kind of, I don't want to say that that's the catalyst of them all targeting Davon, but I think after that moment, she can't hide from it anymore, right? Like her tricks, she's gonna have to pull yeah. like the biggest rabbit out of her hat for that to happen. And so like now I'm talking it through with you and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know if it's, like I, like, I don't want to say lack of skill, but I do know that there are probably some players that in the past we've seen them get to this point. Dan Giesling's another one, you know, like where, mm-hmm. why yeah. would I let him to the final two? He didn't win it all, but the fact that he was able to get there no, with everybody looking at him saying, you can't let this man get there. I think that's what really separates the goats from the goats. Yeah, no. And, and I think that that's why, you know, the concept of, of this show and like, you know, the kind of tongue in cheek, of of why it's the goat is is interesting because i it almost makes me feel like you know give me like a like not house of villains give me like icon island or whatever where it's like because it's a different it's you're exactly right it's a different conversation if you are looking at people that have just been legendary iconic people in their respective shows um but don't necessarily like fulfill that same criteria that you're listing there with all of those other people you mentioned but it's interesting because i'm like you're naming also people that i would consider for this made up icon island show as well yeah um so there's definitely like crossover like you can be an icon and you can be a goat um and you know, I, I would have loved to see Davon do it. Uh, yeah. but I really think, you know, small smaller cast, uh, yeah. you're playing with people that have never done a show like this, didn't know what they were getting themselves into, you know, said yes to a call. We're like, yeah, I'll be on TV again. Um, and truthfully, like they're they're Davon had her back against the wall very early like yeah it's actually impressive to me even though she didn't you know she didn't do the final thing she needed to do um and and i understand why what you're saying with like hey you need to be so good that against their better judgment they still take you to the end totally yeah. understand that I, i'm impressed she, she did what she did like yeah. that's the thing is like, yeah. it almost feels like she did it without properly doing it because yeah. Of all of those factors. It's like she, but it's like she missed a step, you know? Like, I really yeah. do think that, like, when she gets there, them not letting her in and having a hard stance, like, no, you're not getting in. It says a lot about them as players, obviously. Like, this says a lot about Paola as a com- competitor to say, no, no, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you through. And and mm-hmm. that's that's cool. But I also think that, you know, if you wanted to take it to take it up a notch, a perfect game from Devon is them not seeing that she's the one, right? That she's yes. managed to, to do this. And they're maybe looking at Jill as the person we can't let through, you know, or something to that effect or Joe, you know, where she's able to push that onto somebody else. And she wasn't. And like I said, I'm not taking away anything from what she was able to do because I'm I'm a big fan. I was rooting for her. I'm yeah. very sad that she's gone. But it's like she's like she's just missing one more gear that really would have put her in like legend status. Think about Sari on the traders. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's those are where that's legends are made. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like I, <laughs> I hear it and I understand it, but I just, you know, I wish I could have. I wish I could have seen it. Well, even and it it doesn't even necessarily need to be that 
they didn't see, like that she deflected her her threat level to somebody else so that they didn't see that she needed to go it's like if you which is the people that have like the sauce that i like really like the people that are so good socially this is the stuff that i live for that mm. they 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 like you so much that it kind of it, it like it takes over the rational part of their brain yes, that they want recognizes you to win. that yeah. yeah they're like you know what well i might still win and you know and if i don't i'll be happy that this person won because i like them so much like delude mm -hmm. yourself to the point where you you think like i still could but if i don't that that's okay like i'm to okay be with them so yeah socially like incredible that that's the impact you have on people even though they objectively can see that like you're winning the competitions every week like i think that that is like top impressive work and we've seen it we've seen it you know be done it can be um, done yeah and it was great to see that you know day and i i think i talked about this a little bit last week as well as like i don't think that she was she ever had the social like power over that many people to to finish that part of the job to get that mm. and have them totally not care about the fact that she, that she would probably beat them that they just liked her so much because ultimately we see jason make this difficult decision but you know despite loving her uh you know votes votes against her uh at the end of this here but i i just I'm still so impressed by the completeness of her game because yeah. she did do so much like socially, like she did have a lot of people that were riding for her and, you know, she did want win a lot of competitions, but like looking back on it, like, it seems like maybe she didn't need to win all of those. Like maybe some of those in the middle, um, you know, obviously it depends on who, what, like who, who was on what won. team and like what the yeah. situation was. But like there might have been some that she could have like pulled back on because we're learning in this episode that she was a lot more socially like ingratiated than we even realized. And mm -hmm. so this episode kind of starts off with um, Davon and, and Jason talking. And this is what I've been asking for, Chappelle. I said, Mm -hmm. I need to hear from Jason because I got told that they've been working together. They have a final two. And I said, since when? Since when? <laughs> right? Since when? And this was, you know, this was Jason's episode, really. I mean, it was. It really was. Episode, but it no, was but really. This was, a, this was Jason's yeah. moment for sure. This was. Yeah. And so we finally get some, some, you know, context for wh what Jason's been doing and where he's at in the game. And. We get the re big reveal that they have a a day one alliance, um, and we get a little flashback to them talking in the in the first uh, from the first week or the first episode or whatever. And mm. um, I'm sh like I'm shook. I I yeah. love this. Like this this was great to see. I wish I had knew a little bit sooner. Uh, maybe would have given me a little bit more you know suspense thinking like i know that jason and her have been working for so long i'm like i'm just learning this like now yeah. um but i thought this was this was really interesting and, and it really impressed me yeah no this is a brilliant move from jason just i mean because when the house splits in half and it's dave on side versus window side jason is on window side but He's working with Davon, so he's the last one that she's going to pick off of that side if she decides to do it. I think about halfway through, she probably looks at Jason as her goat, not greatest of all time, but, you know, like her yeah. person that she's going to drag to the end, right? Yeah. And, and that's okay, because you could find yourself in a position like this where you can get rid of her, and then you're the one who shot the kill shot of, you know, the, the, the biggest threat in the game. You know, and yeah. that's another thing that we really respected in other reality shows is that when that person makes the move, you're like, oh, they did it. They hid behind the person who was taking all the bullets, the meat shield strategy. They hit it and they cut them at the right time because you cannot sit by them at, at the end. No notes, literally no notes for Jason. Yeah. What I would love is that I wish we had known when he decided that he was going to do this. Like if, yeah. if I found out like four episodes ago, he's like, 
Yeah, me and Dave, Davon, and uh, we're number one. We got this secret thing going. But the first chance I get at the final like four, I'm cutting her. You know, like that would like I would be like, yes, King. You know, because yeah. then he managed to pull it off. But in this episode, it feels like the situation presented himself, and then he rose to the occasion and did what needed to be done. Right, and and as much as I I agree, I love I love information. I love to know as much as possible about people's thought process. I really think that this episode lacks any suspense if we are if we've we've known what Jason would do and that he has been preparing for this moment because truly like this whole episode is really about you know Jason's loyalty to Davon the fact that they've been working together since day one and that he's going he he is in this uh tiebreaker scenario and I think that if we knew that he had been preparing for this moment, um, it's a wrap as soon as we know that she's, you know, staying on the on the block or whatever. And so I am at least appreciative from an edit standpoint in terms of making it interesting that there there was a little suspense. And I would say, like, th this was probably the most exciting vote uh, of the of the, yeah. you know, like I. I cared <laughs> to know yeah. the final vote. You know what I mean? There are how many times has it has been like Tosh is just like anyway, and then like three other people voted for this person. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this was the first suspenseful one. Um, but I, I I agree with you. Like you know, maybe we'll get a chance uh, to find out from Jason um, at what point he realized this needed to happen because the, the edit only can tell so much. Um, but I. I would love to hear your feelings on like how, what percentage of this is Paula's move? What percentage of this is Jason's move? Because at the end of this episode, after Davon has gone and they're all talking in the kitchen and Joe is kind of like, he's, Joe knows what he's doing. He's a, he's a slick guy. He's, <laughs> he's telling Paula like, Hey, you, you did a big thing out there. Like you, um, you know, you did a hard thing. You put her up and like, you took a big swing and like you did this and she's like, yeah, you know, and then we get like confessional from her being like, I made the big move. I made the biggest move of the game. Like I put Dave on up, but without Jason voting the way he did, this move could have backfired for Paula and you have Davon still here and pissed off at you. So I, I would love to hear your take on like, obviously there are two pieces here that needed to happen. You obviously need someone to, to be responsible for putting Davon in a vulnerable situation, but like Jason dealt the final blow because Jill stuck to, to Davon and, and votes mm -hmm. out Joe here. So who yeah. gets the credit? So my first instinct is to get the credit to Paula. Okay. You're right about Jason like being crucial to this working, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're relying on Jason, Jason at some point needs to be able to win a challenge. See, Davon's issue isn't that strategically people didn't know they need to take her out. Like everybody knew, except for Jill. Jill's like, hey, she can stick around. Maybe I'll go to the end with her. The kind of thing we were talking about earlier where I think she if I have to lose, like, it'll be, yeah. yeah. Or if I have to lose, I'd rather lose to you, right? Yeah. Uh, like that kind of thing. Um, that's never been Davon's issue. They all know that she needs to go. So it's like anybody in this situation, sans Jill, would probably have done the same thing Jason does. Comma, but Jason cannot beat Davon in a competition. And that has been the, the thorn in everybody's side is that she won't stop winning. She's won like yeah. four competitions in a row. And so it's like, yeah, she's immune. She's She's got the, the little veto competition they do second. She backdoors them both in one episode to get rid of CJ, you know? And so that's the person, the, the competition is the reason why you can get Davon out. If you can't beat her in the competition, Davon wins this game easily because she's going to walk to the end and then whatever happens from there happens. But you need somebody to really step up and beat her in a challenge and make sure that she goes home. Paolo was the one who was able to do that and solidify that Davon would be on the block. Then they kept her off, the, you know, on the block for the elimination and she got put up next to Joe who got a lot of friends, you know? And so, um, and who yeah. ha also had not won five challenges in one season. So because of that, I feel like as much as I want to give Jason credit for doing what needed to be done, because he absolutely did. 
I don't think you I don't think that was ever an issue. I think the issue is always going to be how are we going to get to her? How we can't touch her yeah. if she keeps winning and she finally lost and at that point you have to strike. Well, and I think that like, you know, and that's why Paula deserves some recognition here for also like you know, going for the jugular at the soonest moment that she I mean, I guess you could argue technically that she could have done it last week, but I don't think that she could have done it last week because I don't think that there was buy-in Wait, for that. I thought Devon won both the competitions last week to get rid of CJ. Um, I guess that was like yeah. a way, yeah. And I guess her keeping CJ doesn't really do anything to Davon. I guess if it's just if you're just trying to keep someone that could potentially be Davon, so you get her. Yeah, she, yeah, she, but she strikes it her first actual opportunity to get mm -hmm. her. Um, and you know you have to commend her for um f for doing it there and not trying to like backdoor her or like wait and see you know do like the safe backup option and wait and see uh who wins the second challenge um because you can't choose <laughs> you can't mm. necessarily choose who the other person is like it's who it's who loses you that you need to actually take the shot right there um and it's scary it's probably scary because you know, like you've seen what Davon can do in this game at this mm -hmm. point. You've seen how like capable she is and how good she is at like everything. Um, yeah. And when you like name her as one of the people up for elimination, you've now put a fire under her. Um, yeah. And she's, you know, she's going to go even harder to win that next thing. Not that she wouldn't have anyway. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't think that that's like in her DNA to not like try unless she's like throwing to like help mm -hmm. herself <laughs> advance further. But like in this situation, she's always going to like go balls to the wall here. But um, so I agree. You do have to give uh, Paolo recognition here because somebody had to do this part. And that's mm -hmm. where I question what was going on with Jason because we're getting, you know, you know, early in this episode where we get the conversation between Jason and, and Dave on, and then we get Paula pulling Jason aside and being like, Hey, what are you going to do if you win the goat? And he kind of, he kind of gives her like this weird lip service where he's like, maybe Joe, like, I don't think you know, he might not be as good as, uh, as Dave on though. And like, he's not even telling Paula that he would put her up. And he recognizes that she would. And then he actually takes this information back to Dave Vaughn. And like, we get a confessional from Jason being like, Pow is like all in on trying to get rid of Dave Vaughn right now. And I don't think that's a smart decision for Paula. So I think that that is very interesting given what Jason ultimately tries to, you know, decides to do here. Because this says to me that. If Jason had won that that goat challenge, if Jason was our goat, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have uh, striked at Davon here. Like he wouldn't have done it. Yeah, I probably I probably get the same vibe that you get about that. Like, I don't think Jason would target Davon had he won. Um, but if the but, opportunity presented himself, like yeah, then him he, having his like hands without, on without it, having to do it, yeah, I, I definitely would vote you out when it makes complete logical sense. Like what Davon gonna be mad at him? Like yeah. you voted me out. It's like Devon, you knew you were gonna win. Stop it. Like we, you, your, yeah. your, your parting words are your, your, your win will be marred by the idea that Devon should have won. You know, so yeah. you can't say that and then also be bitter that I got you out because obviously you, I, you got to know that I want me to win more than I want you to win. But when it comes to the Paula situation with Jason, I thought he played it perfectly. I think that mm -hmm. when Dave, when uh, Paula's asking you for a name. You of course don't give Davon's name because Davon's the big bad wolf in the house. Like she's she's the one who wins the most challenges. If you throw out Davon's name and Paula goes back to Davon and Davon wins the goat, it's you. It's no longer Paula. It's you that is on yeah. the chopping block, right? Because we don't and you know don't who have Davon's it, and you don't necessarily know how far down that path Paula is exactly. at that point too. So you mm -hmm. kind of have to like test the waters to see what she's feeling. 
Right. And then you don't know what your what Devon's plans are because Devon's telling you you're in the final two with her or the final three, you know. So you're like, why would I mess up my position in the final three to potentially get in front of the firing squad by throwing out her name when I could just be fine? Had Devon won the GOAT challenge this week, we have no indication that it would have been Jason on the block, you know. Uh, yeah. So he's like, why would I throw my name out there as a, as a person who's targeting Avon? And he was surprised that Paolo was doing it because doing this before you win the GOAT challenge is wild because, again, it, Davon could win, Jill could win, Jason could win, and then, Paula, you're on the chopping block. So it was a it was a wild play to come to him first, but I think she was just looking for support. Like, if I go to make the move, are you willing to help me make the move? And yeah. He didn't, he waffled, you know, he really did kind of just give her like, oh, you know, I will see, you know, maybe Jason, no, it was it. maybe Joe, maybe Davon, I don't know who would actually win. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that he played it perfectly when it came to that, because like even us at home watching didn't know what he would do. That, yeah, like exactly. You know, I was like, oh, he is like backing Davon here. Like to see him come back to her and being like, I had a chat with Paola. Like she's coming for you, girl. And like Davon just being like, we just got to win. Like I'm not even going to concern myself with that right now, which this conversation ends up being like, <laughs> you know, causing some drama um, after the challenge here. But yeah, I, I really do think that. Given what we know about where Davon's position was in the game, who she was, who she had final twos with, that if Davon had won this goat challenge and she was out first, but if she had won, she's def she's putting up Paola. So Paola like definitely like had the because she named people who she had final twos with. She never yeah. named Paola. She said that she, she had a final Paola. three with her and Jill, but she mm -hmm. said she had final twos with. With Jill, with Jason, with Joe. That leads me to think, you know, and Paola has been no slouch in the challenges. She finally gets her win here. So, you know, good on Paola for recognizing, you know, she might have misread some of the things that she saw um, or, you know, kind of injected her own interpretation of what was going on but she also was kind of right um mm -hmm. and we should also give some more uh credit to cj for all of the work she did in the previous episode of like you know showing paula that this was the case because i was thinking about it i was like okay who's next who's next like mm -hmm. she's been working with the girls um not knowing the context of the day one relationship with jason obviously but I mean, CJ was right. Like, not only was uh, CJ saying, like, you're not going to get to the end. Like, they're going to – she's going to go after you. She was going to go after her next. Like, they're, 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 I just really don't see a world where – do you think Dave on puts up Joe, like – if she had won the goat here, I just think that she's she's she sees the path. If she secures goat and knows I'm in the finale now, I need to get rid of the biggest threat to win another challenge. At that point, it's probably Paula, right? Paula or Joe. But here's something to notice. But Joe's not winning Joe, shit. <laughs> but Joe is the largest person in the house. Like he is by by by, by height. He's he tall. is the he. And Paula is the shortest person. She's literally the smallest person. She might be shorter than you, Jenny. Uh, yeah. And so because of that, if you look at even just that, you have to, it's really hard for you to be like, yeah, Paula is probably a better competitor than Joe, but look at him. I mean, God, the reach on the man in comparison <laughs> to Paula, like name the competitions that Paula will have a natural advantage over Joe. Probably not many, just naturally. But if she, she like, we, we seen Joe, he's like a, like a drunk giraffe sometimes. He's kind of, you know, he's just out there. <laughs> sometimes. But, yeah. Yeah. He, he has his moments. Right. So I think even at that point, it's probably hard to pit this six foot four dude up against like, like a five foot zero woman and say, I got to get rid of her. You know, like, like you got this big tall dude. Losing. And yeah. like all, every time Tosh comes around, he's like drawing even like, like honestly, Tosh is like the best wingman for Joe in terms of like keeping himself around yeah. because Tosh takes like, he, he misses no opportunities to like illuminate how terrible Joe has been at these challenges, which is like mm -hmm. very fun. But also I'm like, you're helping the guy out here at this point, because that's like the biggest argument that he has this has mm -hmm. kept him two two weeks in a row now like i right. do think that that i think davon was cooked probably no matter what being you know up for elimination but 
it's like really hard to make that that argument against Joe. Uh, it's like really like two ends of the spectrum of you can beat this person in a challenge. You will have a hard time beating me in a challenge. Like very, yeah. very two different situations. Then there's still that emotional part that we talked about before where it's like, right. do I want you to win the game? Right. Yeah. And there's sometimes where we see these players that they get so uh, connected emotionally uh, with the people that they're playing with where, okay, yes, yeah, the final four, final five, I should get rid of you, but I just don't have the heart to do it, right? Yeah. And I think at that point, that's what Davon is leaning on. She's leaning on Jason to not have the heart to do the move that he's supposed to do. And yeah. had she been leaning on him more, there's a world where maybe, and, we, and the only reason I say this is because we've seen it on plenty of reality TV shows before, right? Where you're like, why didn't you cut your, your best friend at the final three? And they're like, because it's my best friend. You yeah. know, like, what do you... I cannot do that. I physically cannot. I would rather not win the game at that point. If it's what it takes, then I can't do it. Right. Yeah. We've seen it a billion times. It happens all the time. So for Davon, like I said, I think the real greatest, like the, the greatest competitors, they're the ones that when they're faced with this moment, Jason is not able to cut them. He's just like, he, yeah, I can't do it. I just, I just can't physically do it. I'm sorry. Uh, and that's what she's counting on. So yeah, I think that, unless she like pulls at those Jason heartstrings more and makes a deeper connection. And really, like you said, miss Cla like clouds his judgment and make him make a move. That's not good for his game. There's no way she's getting through this, you know, like up against Joe up against Jason up against like it, you name it. it Davon matter. is yeah. the number one threat. And honestly, Hayden asked CJ. I know you listen to this, CJ. We we <laughs> talked during our exit interview. It was so much fun. <laughs> I don't know if you listen to it, Jenny, but well, then, CJ, yeah. We are homies she, now in my mind, okay? I'm jealous. Uh, I'm, I'm like, I just, I would just wish that I could have been there. <laughs> yeah, like, she put queen. that Nintendo Switch down. The Legend of Zelda <laughs> had just dropped. She finally, rent was due. The people were knocking on the door, and she used her last <laughs> moment to say, hey, y'all got to get out, Davon, or you're going to lose the game. And it actually worked. So, um, kudos yeah. to CJ no, for kind of getting the like, ball rolling on this. Yes, exactly. Like, I think that she, you know, she she was exactly right. And she recognized uh, she knew that she was next. And then she saw Paula and said, you are actually next. Um, and I didn't even know it, at the, know it at the time. I was like, yeah, I definitely, you know, I don't think that she's going to take Paula to the end. But like, just seeing how this has played out, like, yes, yeah, I really do believe that if Davon had uh, uh, won the goat here, that she was going to target Paula. So Paula did what he, she needed to do to protect herself. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, yeah, I'm very interested to find out at what point Jason made his decision because we even see going into the vote, Joe doesn't feel super confident. Like we hear Davon say 75% she feels. And there was a part of me that I was like, okay, he's actually, he's the emotional tie to Davon means mm -hmm. something here and he's going to he's going to keep her against his better judgment um because no promises made to joe either joe felt like mm, i'm really nervous i don't know i don't feel good about this but no he just held he just held his cards really close to him and and we just you know it made for a, a like a compelling vote um but yeah i i don't know i i think very, very sad, very hard, but uh, I'm giving credit to many people here. <laughs> you yeah. got to give some credit to Paola, of course, and, and you know, Jason for finally, like, taking the opportunity when it was presented. I think it just feels, if you're the kind of person that Jason is, and I think that um, I understand him because I do, I do see, like, the sentimental, like, emotional side of him just in, like... Mm -hmm. You haven't got enough of him, but I feel like right. in what I've gotten from him, like I recognize that. Um, right. I think that it would have been hard for him to do it himself. Um, right. But in the way that had the least of his like fingerprints on it, that he could feel okay about it and that, you know, he could explain it to her after the fact and be like, you get to this point. What am I going to do? Um, right. So, yeah, I think that that I think that is kind of the case. It's just very interesting to me at what point his mind starts to what when did his when did his eyes open? You know, mm -hmm. when did the heart get quiet and the brain yeah. takes over? 
Yeah. So, um, okay. So anyway, we, we have our go challenge this week. It's, uh, it's the dating reality shows week. Um, and Joe is a oh, sweet, sweet summer child, Joe, uh, saying it's my time guys. I'm from yeah. the love reality show and we get some low blows <laughs> from Joe here <laughs> Where he all he says, well, I guess Paula is technically from a dating show as well, but that airs on TLC, and who watches TLC? Right, and uh, whoo, uh, that's a tough one. That's a yeah, he killed that one because uh, like I, I, I definitely, you know, you and I both watch Ninety Day, um, yep. and so we we know that Ninety Day is calling it a dating show is wild, you know, like I, it's really it's more than the that. Same- it's, it's yeah, not it's like, not the same. Yeah, it's more of a marriage show, if anything. Yeah, like, yeah, more than a, a dating show. Right, um, those people's minds are on much more than dating. Uh, and more of like, like a divorce show, <laughs> like, right? Like, like, like slow car crash. <laughs> yeah, in Joe's line of television, where you don't get married, it's like a failure, and you move on with your life. In Paula's line of television, if you don't get married, we never see or hear from you again because the entire reason you're on the show is to be married. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that is it. Like, that is why yeah. you're supposed to be on the show. You don't get on the next show without being married or at least in the running to get married. You cannot ever say we're broken up for good or you that's the end of your television career. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is not the same. I think the stakes are a lot high, higher for Paola than they are for Joe at any given time. Yeah. And now, so... The, the shade to, T, to TLC being like, who watches TLC? Um, and our friend Puya raises his hand and says, uh, me, bitch. Um, but and also, with the also <laughs> exactly. I'm like, okay, MILF Man. Now, is MILF Manor, MILF Manor is more of a dating show. That's a dating show. That is a dating That's show. That's a dating mm-hmm. show. So we're going to have the MILFs on season two of The Go. We got to, at some point, we got to bring in the MILFs. If they can't, if they won't put a MILF on the traitors then they can at least give me a MILF on the go. On the go, okay? House of Villains. Yeah, where, more, more MILF content. We're clamoring for the MILFs. I'm telling you, they are. They they have a blind spot. I know Joe said no one watches TLC, but if they're not watching TLC, they are missing out on some people that should be on other shows. Oh, um, I could cast and, House of Villains off of 90 Day alone, okay? Yeah. That's... And then if you throw in Milf Manor like into the mix, if you want to use the two of them, like you're you're set. Um, mm-hmm. The yeah. lore is deep, and there are no shortage of villains <laughs> and uh, legends. So, um, but I yeah, I did love that that shade from Joe. Um, and yeah, uh, th- this this uh, the themes mean nothing here. Okay, this has. <laughs> Like, it being the dating show week is not going to help anyone um, because this goat challenge is, uh, it was called Lipstick, I believe. Um, and so this sure. is the final goat challenge. So this is the last time that there's going to be a goat, um, I presume, based on, on what Tasha said. Uh, Tasha's in some sort of hairy, like, chest pattern He's wearing a romp him again, I think. Again, yes, the romp him is. is back in a big way. Um, when I pop out in mine, I don't want to know. Look, I don't want I no want you questions in that or one. concerns <laughs> getting one. No, I, I don't want like you that in one. Like the, the, like the salmon, like skin colored. No, uh, I don't need like that one. Very no. nipples. Like. <laughs> when I look, when I pop out, it's gonna be good. I'm going I'm, I'm hitting the romp him for uh for fall 2024 or something like that. I got it. Events so that you yeah. can do, like really like doing the romp him. It's justice in the yeah. weather that it demands. You know. Yeah, Rob can't handle it. That's why he come on. Mm-hmm. Do a Big he Brother event me. again, Rob. Um, he doesn't respect we'll me. And it shows. On. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you'll romper. wear the romp him. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this the 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 color of the skin tone for this romp him was strange. Nasty. It, it was like the it was literally looked like salmon. It was so it was so strange. Um, mm. And so yeah. Anyway, the the objective of this challenge is there's like a plexiglass. You got the lines, and you have to kiss an orange against the you're holding an orange with your lips against the plexiglass um 
and it was giving it was giving shades of a survivor challenge and every five minutes you have mm-hmm. to lower down to a different line um and hold it there without dropping it um and I'll take the, you know, backyard dollar store version of a yes. survivor challenge with an orange. Like it was absurd, but uh it it was fun. Um do you think we we've talked about height here? Uh, you know, you've mentioned Joe, tall guy, Paula, short, short lady. Uh, do you think that this challenge was one of the ones that's just made for someone that's smaller? I think it's just made for somebody that's smaller. They yeah. all all their their oranges were at the same level. You know, like yeah, they, they all did have except them for, like they made like, sure that they were hate- calibrated. Right, yeah. exactly. So they all had to go down the same amount, but it's just you just got more body to move if you're someone like Joe. You know, there's there's more yeah. back to bend. And it's just and this looked <laughs> awful. Like this looks so like oh just my back is hurting thinking about this you know joe's back was suffering they bonds out pretty quickly um because she's like i gotta preserve my back and then jill we know she can barely even move because of her pinched nerve and she fights it out for a while it ends up coming down to jason and paula at 30 minutes but when i tell you jenny Mm -hmm. i would not have lasted 30 minutes i would have been gone this would this this challenge would have broke me in half See, this is where I'm not sure how I would do because um, I am I am on the shorter side. Um, I think that that part I would have working for me, but I also like have a lot of lower back pain. So I don't know if that – it's one of those things where I'm like I'm never doing something like this, so I don't actually know mm-hmm. how much I have in me. Um, I do think that I would be good at the like – orange transporting part though like i think that like the, the rolling pressure down part the gas, and like yeah. the yeah like i actually yeah. think that i would have that part of the strategy it would just come down to is the my back. lower back burning um and i need relief um and i just don't think i'll ever know i just unfortunately i don't know that i'll ever know whether i could win this challenge because uh I'm not going on these crazy ass shows. No, um, no, and I don't know not. if we're gonna see. It's like it's not like the most like iconic challenge you'll ever see. But I, you know, it was something different. Yeah, it's different. And Paula wins the most important challenge of the competition at this point. I mean, yeah. because this is the move that's going to take out who everybody considers the front runner. So you know, you got to give her her props when they're due. Yes, and she's very emotional because she's done well in challenges. She's been in. Sorry, that's very crazy. Can you hear that thunder? Yes. No. Okay. You can't. You can't. Sorry, it scared me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry to everyone that's being like, why is she freaking out? Uh, there's Should very, we just edit loud. that out? Are you good with that? Oh, I don't care. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Leave it in. Fuck it. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll deal with it in post. We'll deal with it in post. No, it's fine. Or it's we fine. won't. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, she, you know, she's been she's been in a lot of these, um, but she, you know, she finally gets her win. It's the most important one. It gives her the opportunity to make the move that she wanted to make because it seemed like based on the, the conversations she had with CJ last week, she knew what she needed to do, but she wasn't able to do it that way last week because Davon was safe. This was her opportunity, and you know she takes uh, no time to name Davon as uh, the person that's going to be up for elimination here. Um, and and Davon, Davon's like, what? What happened? <laughs> yeah. And the the explanation was, Paula just said, uh, "I saw you and Jason talking, and I know I was next, so it's got to be you." Davon's like, yeah. What? <laughs> and Davon hates that. Like, had Paula just yeah. said, and Devon will go on to tell us this later on, but had Paula just said, Devon, you're the biggest threat. CJ said it. Everyone has said it. We've all been waiting on you to lose. It's your time. You, If, you, if you're if you really the GOAT, you're going to save yourself. Good luck. Then uh, yeah. Devon would have been like, I can't fault you. But making it seem like Devon was talking and strategizing against her when we didn't see that on camera. Uh, so, you know, if we didn't see it, we're forced to believe that, like, maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it happened off camera. Uh, but because of that, Devon is not happy because she feels like Paula is lying and just like trying to avoid the blame of actually, you know, being the one to put her up or blaming Devon for it. Right. Like she's saying, well, it's your fault. You, you're, you're the reason why you're on the block, essentially. And so Devon walks in the house and she when she walks in the room with Paula, she just starts talking. Like she immediately like, <laughs> she doesn't Paula, her. She's just like <laughs> yeah. she like, so back to what we were saying, what happened? Because you could have just talked to me. I was like, Devon, here we go. 
And I yeah. started to see shades of that old Davon coming out, you know, that like yeah. uh, point blank and the period Davon, you yeah. know, the one that's just not, she's not going to take no guff. And she's been doing such a good job this season, really letting some of these like more tense moments roll off her back. CJ throws her under the bus and she says, well, you know, it was a good game playing with you. Great playing you know, with you, yeah. Yeah, we see that happen several times with Davon where she's like, you know, I can't, I can't promise you that I will vote you out. I mean, it's your time to go, you know, like she really, she had been very measured. Yeah. This was a tough one because I think she could see her game starting to slip tested. away from her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was, I, I was trying to figure out like, you know, where did, where did things turn? Because I could see D Day's frustration here in that, you know, Palace saying like, well, I saw you guys talking about me. I heard you. And she's like, that wasn't even about you. Like, right. I, and then she's like, well, I can't beat you. And she's like, well, then say that. Like, then mm -hmm. just own up to your shit here and tell me what you, like, the reason you actually targeted me. Don't try to make it that, like, I was coming after you and that wasn't the thing. Like, that's frustrating. But what seems to be what incites Davon to get really angry um, and then, uh, you know, the getting in each other's faces um, was, I guess, Davon, like, walks away. Well, Paula is, again, saying, like, you need to learn how to lose. Well, I think maybe that was after. But Paola basically said, like, um, you know, I've like I've lasted this long, and Davon's like, well, you're welcome. Like, I helped you. Um, and I I can't remember exactly what Paola said, but she she said bitch. She did. Um, she called her bitch. And that seemed to be what turned Davon. Um, that was when she was like, okay, I, I, I have held off too much. Um, mm -hmm. this is the straw that's breaking the camel's back here. And she storms back into the room and she says, excuse me, like, you don't call me a bitch. And then we're getting the back and forth of, you know, you need to learn how to lose and don't call me bitch. Get out of my face, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> and the two of them are standing up and they're in each other's faces. And we've got Jill sitting on the bed, like in between them. And it was like. It was giving like challengers watching like the the, the ball go back match. and forth. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like she's watching like each serve between the two of them. Um, it, you know, and she said, "This is too much for me." You know who I yeah. need to get to solve this problem here? Get me grocery store Joe. <laughs> yeah, come on in, up. Joe. Come on in, Joe. Jill is amazing. Jill yeah. is like, all right. Everybody stop. Joe, get in here. Fix this. Production, you ought to be a sh Like, she just started ordering, yeah. barking people around. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, they better not let Jill get to the end. Dear God. If she had yeah. she had the control as if she was a producer. You know, like, she like, everybody she stop. Joe, chip. come here. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. bro, if Jill tells me that, oh, she's going to the final two with me, I'll be like, okay, maybe. You know, so that's what I'm saying. You get you can't let somebody like that get close to the end. That that was wild because she she left into action, but it wasn't that she went and got a uh, security. She went and got yeah. another contestant. She's like, "Hey, you come here." I said, "Oh yeah, this <laughs> is good. This is good. Good stuff from Jill." It it was incredible. You know, again, I feel like she is running this place in her yes. in her own way. She's she's talking about there's no orange juice here. What is how like what's going on in this place? Um and. I just think that so funny of all people to to call in here to break things up. Uh, the great mediator Joe, um, who to me just seems like the most like pacifist kind of person. Which I guess is Those that the people. person you want? But yeah. I don't think that he wanted anything to do with this. Like, yes, he's calming. Yes, he's like, hey, I don't want any drama. But like, is that the person? Is that what you do? You throw like the awkward person in the middle and they're like, I don't know what to do with this. Joe's here now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what other option did they have? Like Jason, Jason get in here. Like, I think like, that you know, Jason and, and Joe probably have about the same amount of just like a uh, uh, of aggression in the house, right? Neither one of them yeah. have gotten into an argument or anything with anybody at all. You know, so your options are like Jason, who's over there chilling, or Joe, who's over there chilling. Like, well, now a big guy, this, stand away. True. Again, the the tallness yeah. of it all. Um, but yeah, does this say something about you know how people feel about Joe though? Where it's like, you know, 
I, I've been saying it since the beginning. I see, I see it for him. He's a cal- everyone likes him. He's a calming presence. He's like everyone seems to feel safe with Joe. That's mm-hmm. why Joe gets called in here. Not a producer, not right. anyone else, not Jason. Joe, get in here. Yeah. And he's like walking in and he's like, all right, oh, geez, guys, come on. Yeah. Everybody break it up. Stop fighting, you know. Um, for a second. It looked like it might it might get physical, but Paula yes. does take back it the B word. Close. Yeah, <laughs> Paula's like, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you that." She's I was saying just, it angrily. She's yelling right. like, "I'm She's, sorry for calling you, bitch." It's like, right, like I because because <laughs> I think Paula's like that word, bitch, is distracting you from my point. My point is that you need to yeah. go. My point is that you are winning the game and you are now so focused on the word bitch that you are now not acknowledging that my point is that you need to go and I did what I needed to do to get you out. Uh, and Davon's conversation. Right. And Davon's <laughs> no. like, yeah, because we're going to stay on this bitch conversation because who are you calling bitch? Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, yeah. right, exactly. And so those two things uh, kind of come to a head. And for a second, Davon is like, I got something for you. And then she comes back and she's like, you know what? Actually, no, I'm good. I'm going to pray on it. I'm going to pray for you. I hope you do well in life, but I am not going to give you the power over me to make me go to that negative place. And to that, I say that is gross. That is definitely uh, like that is gross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That is gross. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that makes me feel good for Dave on that. Like she's recognizing that, like, because I don't want to see, you know, even though she's had some like iconic moments in iconic moments. Mm-hmm. in conflict i don't want to see it like in a way that it's you know detrimental to like her feelings about herself and like mm. you know ultimately like i i'm a soft bitch i say it all the time and i'm not saying bitch derogatorily about myself right now um but like you watch him out I, don't say that about my friend <laughs> sorry, don't say that I'm about so my sorry. friend jenny i meant it nicely yeah um but i ultimately want the what's best for day on the person and you know this is a moment where she caught herself she said you know what i'm not going to go to that place that's going to like destroy you because that is also going to do harm to me um yeah the the growth the growth uh so you know and i it seems like based on davon's uh final words leaving this that she kind of um you know, she took something away from this journey. Um, one memorable moment from this this fight when when Joe comes in is he he literally quoted something that I feel like I could say when I am uh, watching these shows and and reca- recapping them so intensely, taking them so seriously. These nonsense shows. Uh, I'm 37 years old, and this is my life. <laughs> this is what we are. This is my life. This is what we Joe, do. Joe, see, he gets me. You know. He understands. Jenny, what did you think about the hometown visits that we got in this episode? Oh, uh, yeah. That was you the know, that Joe was the theme. Get to the hometown. <laughs> he he did it. This is the second one per, yeah. per our research because we're absolutely correct on what placement yeah. he got on the He's Bachelorette. Get third place here probably because that's where he got. <laughs> that's where he placed. I was like, he did it again. He did it. <laughs> Um, this, yeah, this to me is one of the biggest reaches of the season. Like to be like, this is dating show week. Thus, we're gonna do hometown visits. Thus, you have to herd goats. Goats. I was like, why is this not farmer want like no love for farmer wants a wife? Like None. that. It was, no love that's for a farmer wants a wife. Yeah, that but we're not doing show. it. Well, remember Amish in the city. Um, you know, I could <laughs> like the simple life had some 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 farm animals on it. There are yeah. plenty of animal related uh, reality shows, but uh, the goat said, "Nah, we're just gonna shoehorn this one in here." Well, they needed a reason to bring goats in, and thank God because to name I loved them. it. I loved mm-hmm. it, and to name them, they had so so the the again the elimination challenge or whatever this other challenge is. Uh, I'll never know. Um, I know the ultimation. I don't know what this mm-hmm. challenge is called. It's the glorified veto. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a matchmaker game. And uh, the goats have little collars with matching symbols with other goats. Like, get it, you have to herd them together into their proper pen. And there's some that don't have the right thing. Anyway, we got Billy the Bachelor. Mm-hmm. We got Chad from F Buck Island. Is a, yes. I don't think I'm is a male goat a buck or are we shoehorning a little bit there? 
I, I thought like buck is what they maybe do, right? Like I oh. buck the verb. Okay. Because a buck is like a male deer, right? Yeah. And I guess it's a male goat too. So Billy's and Bucks per whatever this AI Google thing I just did is okay. are both male goats. So they have two names? They're Billy's and, and Bucks? Billy's and, Billy's Billy, and Bucks. Buck. That's correct. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And a castrated I, male is called a weather. A weather? Mm -hmm, a weather. Like W E A T H E R? W E T H E R. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's the third weather that I'm. Okay. Right. That I've never seen um, before. Yeah, this is a new weather for me. I thought I was like, okay, it's either like like weather or W H E T H E R. And it's like whether they have nuts or not. Um, Basically. And they do not. <laughs> they to do be not. clear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I learned at trivia this past week that uh, I love learning the like the male and female names for like animals. Um, a female mouse is a doe, like a deer. Yeah. Okay. Who knew? Yeah, I know. So some of these have the same names. Anyway. Yeah. We learn so much. It's an educational podcast here. Um, we had Maybell from Married at First Bleat. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i think the last of our named goats was snacks from the goatomatum my favorite one by far the goatomatum yeah. is awesome yeah so uh i was just happy to see goats they were so cute uh i would be so excited to do this challenge uh would i be good at it i have no idea i am a bit of an animal whisperer though so maybe oh okay yeah i, like, I, I feel like, like i could have done this too yeah I just They're, I'm not like Joe where they run away from you. <laughs> like those goats yeah. are like, bye. I don't trust you, sir. <laughs> right. See, that's the thing. I'm deceptively trustworthy. You know, like people would look at me and like go goats would be like, Yeah, we can hang out with that guy. And then I would just like, and I don't have like a smooth touch at all. Like they would be like, Hey, what are you doing, Chappelle? And I would just throw them in there. Um <laughs> like, ah. and it's and it's crazy to me because we see that each of them has like their own tactic that kind of works or doesn't work for them. But the wildest part about all of this is that Devon needs to win. Her back's up against the wall. She's hurting mm -hmm. them. She looks like she's doing a great job. My girl is cooking. Yeah. And one of the goats got out of the pen. What she loses been? by seven seconds. Jenny, what could have happened had she not let that no. goat out the pen? She's cursing that goat to this day, I would think. Because she, it seemed like her technique was incredible. She had this calming presence um she, she you know she just got into this mode and she was like okay and she had like her little snacks for them and they were they were flocking to her everything was good and um yeah it's it's just tough you know one mm -hmm. one gets out she had the technique she loses by seven seconds and like she could have beaten jason who grew up on a farm and had experience raising goats like mm -hmm. you Whereas, like, in the runway challenge, being a model, you might say, could have been uh, an advantage. But really, it was more about, like, balance than anything. Mm. And I don't necessarily think that, like, the most balanced people are all models. Um, this is, like, directly, like, having experience with goats and hurting them and having that presence with them is literally the biggest advantage D direct advantage here um so i i think even more impressive that davon literally if she, it wasn't for that one goat getting out of the pen could have won this challenge wild could, she could have done it she could have done it yeah. she got really really close but man i just it's, it's, it's sad that it comes down to literal goats to be yes. the thing to stop davon from becoming the goat and she, honestly you know i think that they've been sad when they have to melt their little goat um, when they get eliminated, I think at that moment that was probably cathartic for her because she was pissed off about goats. I think at that point she's like, "This is this mf -er cost me the game." Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the what ifs uh, there because uh, very impressive run from her, and uh, you know it sucked to see her like emotional, being like, "Yeah, if I came in last place, like this wouldn't have felt so bad." But like to be that close to saving myself. Um, but ultimately, like, she still thinks that she has an out here because she has a good conversation with Jason about, like, you know, we've been working together since day one. You've been my ally. Like, 
And she says, like, 75%, I think he's going to keep me. Well, that 25% is a little yeah. bit bigger than <laughs> So, so yeah. Uh, Jill sticks by Davon. She, she, now, do you think that Jill had any idea what Jason was doing? Like, what's no. the... What's the situation between Jill and Jason? Because Davon said that the three of them had a final three. So it's like, I never see Jill and Jason talk. I think, I think Davon's probably the glue of that relationship. Yeah. Right. Like, so he, right. she has a day, she has a day one with Jill and a day one with Jason. So she's like, by proxy, I have a day, like it's the three of us because yeah. for all intents and purposes, they're not going to eliminate Davon. Newsflash, they will, um, or at least Jason will. But I don't think yeah. Jill knew. I don't think Jill was aware that Jason uh, was about to eliminate Davon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's tough. It's tough. But, you know, um, we we get to our vote, and it goes the way we, we expect here. And uh, I thought, you know, Davon has a nice exit. Um, she's – she lets them know, like, hey – uh, you know, we're all, I, I thought she had like the perfect blend of like, um, you know, confidence being like, you got me out cause you couldn't beat me sort of thing, but like not in a way that felt like sore losery. Um, and you know, she also talks about how like, we're all going to be a family after this. Like we've, um, you know, we've all been this and together, like, we're attached for life. The narrative will be, you know, so-and-so won, but you'll, you'll remember that Dave played a hell of a game and she's right though. Like she's not wrong. She, no matter what, you can't walk away from this season of television and be like, nah, nothing, nothing to write home about in terms of what Davon did. Like she did play a hell of a game. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I like as, as much as it was sad, I just felt like, I felt the peace that she felt for herself in terms of like, I mean, who knew that this, this game was like one that I think really made, makes a difference for her in like the landscape of her reality TV career. Like, I really think that she took some confidence away from this seeing like she can, you know, play a very well-rounded good game, come up a little short, but took a lot of lessons from it. Like the hashtag growth of it all. Um, Mm -hmm. Could this be what reignites the spark for Dave on where, where she gets just so close, learn something about herself, newfound confidence. Are we about to have our Dave on Rogers Renaissance era? The Devon. The yeah, Devon. Love Renaissance. that. Yeah. 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 Um, maybe, uh, maybe. coincidentally or maybe not coincidentally, but, um, you know, quite as kept. I don't have an exit interview with Davon coming up. Be- and, you know, you and I are kind of looking at maybe Davon is out she filming busy? another television show. She might right, be busy. Exactly. She might be too busy to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And maybe, just maybe, off the heels of this amazing showing that she had on The Goat, um, that she does get the, you know, the confidence to go ahead and take like, this, this energy to a different game. Right. So keep an eye out for Davon in the future because maybe she'll just be bringing some of this goat attitude to another TV screen near you. And I hope that our loss in that we don't get to hear from Davon, we don't get the conversation uh, with her in an exit interview with you this week. I hope that that loss for us ends up being Davon's uh, gain in whatever she's busy doing um, because. It was, it was really, really so fun to see her on TV again. And like I said, you know, um, it wasn't it wasn't a walk in the park. She she had challenges like she had people against her. Um, but it was also nice to see her have like an alliance and run things like make votes happen that I still am like, how did you do this? Um, incredible stuff. Um, so I, I, I'm very pleased with uh, with. Davon's run here on the goat, even though uh, it will always sting the what ifs of of where it could be. But we still have a final four here. We do, and I need to we know, Jenny. Yeah, but when, for this final four, who are you thinking as far as win equity? What are we what are we talking? Here's the thing. I mean, I've been saying all along that I just couldn't see narratively um, a path for for Jason or Paula, but in this episode. 
this this doesn't happen without Jason or Paula. So right. it's 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 hard. It's it's really hard for me to to count them out now. I wish Especially that we would have gone when, more about their journey before this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can only tell so many stories, Jimmy. I guess. I don't know. I mean, especially because they're up against Jill and Joe. See, the thing with Jill is that we know that Jill has always been in control of the house to mm -hmm. some extent, but that back might be an issue. And then yeah. Joe, I'd argue that although we love Joe, uh, all of the final four or final five, including Davon, feel like they can beat Joe at the end. And so it's like, if they are correct, then Jason and Paula have just as much claim to to this title and to this like narrative that they could win this as much as anybody else. Because when it starts talking about moves that are being made, if you look at that kind of thing, then Jason and Paula were instrumental in getting rid of the biggest threat in the house, whereas Jill was going to let her hang around. You know, yeah. uh, Joe did not make any moves in the game essentially when it comes to eliminating any of his his competition for a very long um, time. That's just the very beginning, and so I it's think like, he made moves. I can make arguments for Joe. I think I don't Joe think made. made <laughs> I, I think Joe made made the move of recognizing his place in the hierarchy of the guys alliance and making the shift over to the women. Like I do oh, yeah. think that he was like I think that he you know recognized like when. I think that he he had a lot of social awareness. And the other thing is what I will give to Joe is that we cannot discount the power of being likable. And yeah. we've been talking about it. And how many times do, you know, and it looks based on the preview that there is some sort of jury situation because we see the, you know, the eliminated um, uh, herd come back there's conversations um it's giving like claim to fame where they return and they get to have like conversations Ooh. with them one-on-one -on -one before like the i don't know um it, but it's a claim to fame needs to retcon that because the claim to fame i have some problems yeah it's really bad that, claim to fame. it's yeah yeah actually <laughs> clean that up we got claim to fame actually coming yeah back get soon. that together tighten that up yeah. claim to fame. <laughs> if, you, if you have time uh yeah. change the game that has already filmed um yeah. but uh i just think that there's one thing that he's had this entire game and just been like this uncanny likable like you know mm. personality that everyone gravitates to no one feels bad oh maybe Tasha feels bad i don't know um yeah. but <laughs> i forgot about Tasha. <laughs> it's Your God, it's been years. <laughs> yeah Tasha it, might feel it, a little bit mad <laughs> it's been years since we've seen some of these people like who the, who the hell think knows what like it's is is everybody on the jury is there is it's what who what the hell is Joey Sasso going to say about all of this? You know, like, where has he been for a month know. and a half? So, Why no, but my, my... Each people, like, all of them coming back and being like, hey, Joey Sasso, here's what happened this week. on Yeah, the let me catch you up since you haven't been watching the game along alongside <laughs> of everybody, you know? Um, But, no, my point about saying that Joey hasn't made a move is to say that, like, he hasn't gone and actively eliminated somebody in the way those others who have, but they, mm -hmm. he does have the intangibles of, like you were saying, being liked. And so it's like... If you say, like, we don't really see the narrative of Jason winning prior to this, but we do now, right? And we didn't see the narrative of Paolo winning prior to this, but we do now. Yeah. And, you know, and Jill has always made a claim for why she should be, the, you know, the the next in line when it comes to Davon. Yeah. And then, of course, now and and we a lot got of Joe. With her, so, yeah. like, you and, know. And we have Joe, who has just been so likable throughout that nobody's had a real issue with him, except for maybe his number one ally in the game, Tasha. And so, um, aside from all of that, I think it's anybody's game, but I need you to pick somebody and I need you to rank them. Listen, I, okay. I, I, I can see, I I'm actually on board with seeing a narrative for all of them now. Yes. Um, but I have to go back to what I said about, you know, not knowing what these people are going to value and whether they are going to care about like, were you in control of the game? Did you make the moves? Like I, you know, you could, this is not the exact same comparison, but like, is, is Jill like, uh, Charlie, um, mm. to, to Davon's Maria, even though day Jill didn't vote day out. Yeah. And like, is Joe Kenzie? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. Like, is is Joe just like, well, everyone liked him. So people are gonna feel good about that. And they don't necessarily care about like rewarding the person that made 
moves with the other person that everyone said should have won the game. Like, right. um, and that's not even acknowledge like this, this analogy doesn't even acknowledge Jason or Paolo who you have to say, well, you're the ones that actually made the potential like game winning move of getting rid of Davon. Um, yeah. so is it, that like but, Lindsay and Kinsey going and jumping Maria and getting her out? You know, like, right. well, what are we doing here? Because, you know, um, I don't know. I think that's a, that's a very good point. And then especially with like, We've seen the power of likability in, in these games mm -hmm. and how you could just win. I mean, it was very clear to us that Tanisha was a front runner on House of Villains the entire yeah. game. Yeah. And when she's sitting at the end next to my girl, Anfisa, I'm like, Anfisa is going to get some votes. She can get votes because they don't hate her. You know, like it's not always about who's in the most control. If you're sitting right next to the right person, maybe it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And so maybe they look at Jill as like you were Davon's lap dog. And so whoever sitting next to Jill has a layup, you know, yeah. maybe it's like, well, you know, Davon was doing all the work. Jill was it. And so if you look at da Jill versus Joe, they've eliminated the same amount of people essentially, you know what I'm saying? So, and then we don't even know how they whittle this down. Is it a final two? Is it a final three? We don't really know what the mechanism is. Yeah. So literally you can stack them up against each other and probably make arguments for each one of them. So you're saying Joe is number one. I think that for me, that because I can I can make arguments for all four of them now, but I don't feel intensely strong about like one over the other that I'm going to just go lock in what I said in the very first podcast that we did. Chappelle mm -hmm. when we said let's name a winner pick I'm like it's gonna be it's gonna be grocery store Joe and I yeah. just think that like you know I've enjoyed him and I've enjoyed him and enjoyed him. uh he's still there and I think that he has that like that factor that we see wins a lot of people games um mm -hmm. and way more strategic games than this so I just think that it's really hard for me to ignore that and I just want to like hold to my day one winner pick um, because he's still in the conversation. So that's what I'm going to go with. But I really do think that now that we've seen this play out to this point, I feel good about any of these people winning based on how the story has gone. Um, yeah. I just feel like edit wise, I feel like we just saw a little bit more of Joe and mm. um, Jill and like a little bit more of the narration of where they were at in the game throughout the entire game. And that right. to me is hard to ignore. Yeah, and luckily we got one more episode left of the goat, and so no, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna shoot your shot. You're not gonna shoot your shot on this. I shouldn't. Nah, uh, nah, I'm, wow. not, I'm not gonna. You just don't want to be I, wrong. I, I don't want to be wrong. Also, I mean, you know, <laughs> I agree with you at the very beginning. Listen, listen. If you're right, I'm one. I'm riding that way. Like we okay, said, so you're just gonna, it was like, Joe. Agree. Yeah, <laughs> we said <laughs> it was another. Joe from the day one strokes. We got it on the first day. <laughs> but no, I I really um. I like going into the finale, looking at it and saying it's anybody's game. And yeah. I think it's Davon is there. That it's still yeah. that. Yeah. And I still work. If Davon is there in the finale, it's Davon's game to lose in quotation mm -hmm. marks. I'd much rather it be anybody can pull this out. Let's see what they, what it takes to get them across the finish line to earn the crown of the goat. Uh, yeah. And so I would like to see it. You know, I want to see um, people stepping up, winning challenges, winning votes, what winning whatever. Do it. What if Joe comes out and he just like runs the table in whatever they have left and he's like he's six Haha. five, Jenny. He's supposed to. <laughs> the man yeah, is well, large. Well, what <laughs> if he he's like, you know, he he's pulling like a, a Tyson apostle yes. and he's like he's I've been just faking like, it all season yeah, just to lower my like, threat I, level. Yeah, I couldn't be this tall ass guy winning challenges. You were gonna get rid of me. I just needed to like bide my time until mm -hmm. I was able to turn up the heat. If he comes and says and says that, I'm just like slow clap to you, He's sir. Slow clap. A slow clap. Um, now I don't know how believable it is. It's that mannequin <laughs> thing. I think the mannequin thing really sets him back. I think that like you can fake a lot of things. That's really hard to fake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you might be a sociopath bad. if you're able to pull that one off. Yeah. So <laughs> um but but again, yeah. we love that kind of thing. We love the big reveals at the end. We love for people yeah. to be like, no, this is what I was trying to do the whole time. Tell me you were trying to do that. You executed it and you deserve the vote. Um, I would love to see it. So I'm very excited to see what happens next. And I'm excited that we're going to get to see, at least in some capacity, the rest of the cast. Uh, it looks like we saw pretty much everyone in the preview for the for the finale. Um, I don't know in what capacity, but um, I'm glad because, you know, we're, we're in this show for the 
the recognizable characters that we've had. Um, so I can't wait for that. So yeah, we'll be back to recap the finale next week. Um, it's been a it's been a wild ride. It's been really fun. I've had so much fun uh, talking about this with you, Chappelle. No exit interview this week, but and no I've, exit interview. Have, wink, wink. Yeah, yeah. She's sorry, busy. she's got a packed schedule. I'm sorry. Right, I'm just saying. Um, but you have a packed schedule too. So what else do you have going on? Uh, you know, no exit interview, but you're busy. Yeah, I'm a busy, I'm a busy bee. Um, busy, boy. busy, busy boy. Uh, yeah, so still covering Below Deck here on RJP with Sasha. We go live every week. Uh, normally we do Wednesdays, but this week we're doing Thursdays. So check that out if you haven't already. Uh, keep up with our Below Deck coverage on our on the Rob Has a Podcast YouTube page. But then uh, enjoying the live chat because it's a, it's a blast at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, but like I said, we're doing it on Thursday this week. And then, of course, if you subscribe to Below Deck, uh, Rob Has feed, wherever you get your podcast, you can keep up with the feed there. Uh, we're working on bringing in some guests. We're still in, in in negotiations for some big guests this season, so fingers crossed that they come through. But tune in to that uh, for more below that content. Uh, and then uh, if you look over to nothing but Netflix, Rob Cesarino was out this week. My boy is traveling, and so he left me to talk about whatever I want to talk about. So I called in Jason Reed to discuss the movie Hitman on Netflix. It is number one on Netflix. And Jenny, it's, it's really good. Uh, honestly, I think you would like it. Um... Yeah, I think Phil went to see it recently and then was like, oh, I think that I have this rule where I can't see anything with guns. Um, Yeah. And so he was worried that I couldn't see it. And then he came home and he was like, I think you actually could have seen that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. For it to be a movie called Hitman, very little guns. No, there's some guns, but not a lot. Not a lot. Not so heavy on the hit. (laughs) <laughs> not so much it's a lot of man for sure and so check that out Perfect. That's nothing, great. yeah nothing but netflix me and jason reed yeah we knocked that one out so make sure you subscribe to nothing but netflix wherever you get your podcast then you can check me out over on recapkickback.com my podcast where i talk about whatever i want and uh this week uh was juneteenth and so uh we celebrated juneteenth by talking about the movie the blackening which is set on Juneteenth, uh, but it dropped in 2022. I'd never seen it. And I called in a panel of goofy people to talk to it, uh, talk about it with. And so uh brought in AJ, the kid Norris, uh, back for his first time at our uh at recap. Beard is looking so very, good. Oh my god, he's like a little grown man. It's so it's so unnerving. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> boy, I'm a little baby. And then uh yeah, and then uh being Camille AF, uh recent newcomer to recap kickback, wanted to help out, and so we had a good conversation about that. Uh, so check that out. And then, of course, check out the House of the Dragon coverage with me and Mari every week. It is so much fun so far. We've already talked about the premiere. We've done a preview as well. And so we're going to have House of Dragon coverage coming your way uh, for the foreseeable future on the uh, Westeros kickback over on Recap Kickback. So make sure you subscribe to recapkickback.com slash subscribe to keep up with the podcast. You heard the man. Subscribe if you have not already. Um, he stays booked and busy uh, like Dave Vaughn. He's like, Dave Vaughn. <laughs> um, <laughs> giving us all this incredible uh, content. So um, Also, criminal behavior that I won't get to talk to Dave Vaughn. Like, how, whose leg do I have to We have to hump? figure something out. Whenever yeah, she's like, back, how do I get here? Can we just, we can do a goat deep, deep dive, right? Like, right. Uh, yeah. A season retrospective. Yeah. Come on. It was, yeah. it was her game. We have to hear from her. So we'll figure something out. Well, let's let mm. Dave on do what she needs to do, but we'll, we'll figure something out. I hope, I hope. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, besides uh, the, the goat over here on hit or quit, um, Puya and I got back together this week to cover MILF Manor. Uh, Chappelle said, none of these shenanigans for me. Not this um, week. But we're going we're gonna to rope you back in for, for next week, I think. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the 90 Day Fiance feed to get your MILF Manor um, coverage. Uh, also a very ridiculous show. And uh, other than that, Follow me on social media at Jenny Autumn. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and staying with us here on The Goat. It's been a really good time. And we'll be back next week to cover the finale of The Goat. And so we'll see you then. Okay, bye. Peace.